It's uncompromising, addictive and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. It's round three coming to you from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, run alongside the Asia Pacific Rally Championship. Last round in Canberra, we made history again, where Molly Taylor became the first woman to win a round of the Australian Rally Championship. Steve McKenzie's stop-start attack this year continued with suspension dramas, robbing him of a first ever ARC heat win. An aggressive Simon Evans paid the price for monstering his younger brother who was getting in his way. Eating his dust only choked the Honda Jazz. But then Eli looked certain to fail after crashing out in heat one. 70. Oh, we're out man. He bounced back for a tussle with Molly Taylor and the Citroens of Sullins and Coppin both led heat two at different stages. In the end, it was the non-registered Harry Bates in his first outing who caused the upset, sneaking in front of Sullins and allowing Molly Taylor in for the weekend win. So Molly leads the way from Eli Evans after two rounds. Tony Sullins is third, with Adrian Coppin fourth, thanks to a non-finish from Simon Evans. Steve McKenzie rounds out the five. In the four-wheel drive national series, Mick Patton extended his lead over Justin Dowell with Marcus Walkham jumping to third. But things will change after this round in Queensland. It's the best three of four rounds. And so far, only the Repco rally team of Mick Patton and Bernie Webb has the consistency to be considered winners. Justin Dowell is MIA this round with business, but Mark Petter is back with the Peugeot Maxi car sorted. He and Dale Moskett have a score to settle. Michael Bailey is a regular feature on the national circuit and returns with Matt Harriott in the freshly repowered BP Ultimate Evo 9. The man behind Fibertech Medical is having a red hot go this weekend too. He might not be the fastest, but consistency is a feature of Gerald Schofield he and Katrina Kelly are looking for a podium. With eyes on the championship though, it's Eli Evans who wants the top spot. He and Glenn Weston know what it's like to win. They'll be doing what they can to cause an upset in the Citroen DS3. Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes know they must come out fighting. There's no room for complacency and certainly no chivalry will be granted to the Hitech Oil's Renault team. Tony Sullins and Julia Barkley came oh so close to their first win in the championship last round and will be looking for even better things in Queensland in their Citroen DS3. After stumbling at the final hurdle, Adrian Coffin and Erin Kelly will also be looking to go one better this round. The third of the DS3s has been mechanically overhauled and is ready for action. Steve and Brent McKenzie are hoping their luck has finally turned. An overnight stop in Gundawindi en route from Victoria saw a smash and grab on their service vehicle and $10,000 worth of tools stolen. Things certainly couldn't get much worse for the Optico team. And let's not forget the man who brought new meaning to sibling rivalry last round after a confrontation with Eli that many had speculated might be coming. His bark was more ferocious than his bite, and he and Ben Searcy are back with a new engine to square things away out on the road. Simon collected three bonus points for second in the Armour All STP Power Stage here this round. Unable to beat Eli, who scored maximum points once again. 0.8 of a second separated the top three. Tony Sullins grabbing the final point on offer. In four-wheel drive, Mark Petter had the upper hand in the final. Dead heating, the winning outright time and a clear winner over Gerald Schofield, who edged out Michael Bailey for second. The rally begins tomorrow in the Hinterland, an endurance round which has subtle differences to a usual heat. Dean Herridge is at the ceremonial start in Caloundra and has the details. So STP and Armour All Power Stage has been run and won. 
Ironically, four-wheel drive winner here, Mark Petter. Great run for him to get the maximum points. Now, of course, we're moving to the rally proper. Ceremonial start here in the streets of Caloundra. Electric atmosphere, the chance for the people to get up close and personal with the cars. Here we go, two-wheel drive winner, Eli Evans in the Citroen. So power stage out of the way. Now it's about our endurance round. This is the first of our endurance series where the two days count. There's heat points there, but it's about the endurance and the speed of these cars. We'll be, of course, focusing on our outright and four-wheel drive cars. After 100 millimetres of rain in the preceding week, the Sunshine Coast is beginning to live up to its reputation. The clouds have cleared and life in the sun is returning to normal. But life is far from normal inland in the Mary Valley, to the northwest of Caloundra. This will be home to the International Rally of Queensland and the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. With a handful of drivers breathing down his neck, Eli Evans knows the roads today will be a deciding factor. A lot of the stages um, are hard packed clay, uh, so if, when it is wet it's very slippery, but when it's dry it's almost like tarmac. So yeah, it's going to be interesting today, I think uh, it's going to be very grippy, a little bit greasy between the trees, so a little bit of caution in there, but um, you know, you've got to go flat out from the first stage. The focus for Eli this weekend is on overtaking championship leader Molly Taylor, but the events of last round with his brother are not far from his mind. You don't want to poke, a, poke the big gorilla and wake him up, do you? So uh, he'll get pretty angry. So we'll see. I think he's going to go flat out from where go, as he normally does. So it's going to be on our toes, be ready for his attack and hopefully hold him off. I'm really looking forward to getting out there. Uh, we've gone the 900 option because we're car 13 on the road. We're a bit down the field. It's going to be swept. Um, so we're taking a little bit of a punt. But it's a medium compound, so I can't wait to get out there. Our championship leader is clear on what's needed this weekend. It's an endurance run and we've still got a long way to go in the championship and as you say that you know Simon and Eli aren't going to back down without a fight so I, I certainly don't think it's a you know the time to be um, you know sort of backing off and uh, you know driving conservatively we still need to push. This is the weekend Tony Sullins must make his move. Coming to the halfway point of the championship he's in a handy third position. His start in the power stage given them confidence for the rally. I've set up my car based on my strengths, which will be the fast stuff. The slow stuff, I'll probably be a bit slower on. I'm a bit too stiff on the suspension, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, if I'm comfortable in the, in the car, I should be reasonably quick. He's not quick on the opening stage and knows it. Over five kilometres, he slumps to fourth position and 14 seconds behind the lead car. Oh, I think that was really slow. The car is, um, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Simon, on the other hand, is fast. Only 3 minutes 30 to cover the short sprint distance and leading Molly Taylor by 7 seconds. It's Eli who blitzes the field, though, three quicker than Simon and attacking, as he indicated, from the outset. But attacking means taking chances. And he and Glenn Weston have a narrow escape that threatens to end their rally early. After the loss of tools from their service truck, Steve McKenzie is focused on turning things around this weekend. But he's robbed again, this time of a good opening stage time within half a K of the start. After a spectacular start to his ARC career, Harry Bates is brought down to earth with a crash as well. Drive shaft. The balance between the highs and lows Bugger. of rallying Bugger. has come Humpy. back to back for a young man Humpy. with rally pedigree in only his second ARC Bugger. event. Fast right eight over crest into left eight line over crest doubles. SS2 Gibber is traditionally the opening crest stage crest to this rally seven. and a familiar one for Eli Evans. It's another seven. clean run and he banks a valuable lead. But he's wary seven. of the risks. Right we had a really great stage one. I think we were third fastest in the APRC, so that's really pleasing. Bit of a moment right at the finish line where we nearly rolled it, so cut over crest and a bit of a wake up call. Got away with it, so. Just pulled it back a little bit for this one and um, you can see on the times are a little bit slower. Again, Simon is three seconds behind, but his strategy is long range, thinking ahead to the 22 kilometre speedy contractor stage up ahead. He's excited. I'm really happy. Now the car's meant and we set stage run was pretty tricky and we've gone out on 900s. So 
you know, the idea is to have good tyres for this long stage, and that's why we're, we're ready. Tony Sullins is third fastest in the Citroen. Quicker than the Renault this stage, but in all, a second a kilometre behind Eli. Yeah, the first one doesn't suit the way I got the car set up, and I'd forgotten all about that stage until we got out there. Um, so then I, you know, was a bit tentative through it, and this one I sort of knew the, roughly the flow of the thing. Still a bit tentative, there's more in it, I'm sure. The car's great and I'm feeling good. The high-tech oil's Renault is not inspiring confidence in Molly Taylor. You know, there's just a few really rough compressions and it just, he's not very happy, he's not wanting to select gear, so in the stage it was fine. Hopefully, um, I don't know, we'll, uh, we've got a gear now, so we'll, uh, we'll keep going while we've got gears. The rough compressions have taken their toll on Steve and Brent McKenzie. They've backed off after the massive hit in the opening stage. Service is still two stages away, but with all that coolant leaking, it's not looking good. Yeah, just a you know, dip, kick the car on its nose, and yeah, it's made a mess at the front, so uh, we went limped through that one. I'll see what the guys reckon when we get back to refuel. I intended on just taking it easy for the first few, but <laughs> got the red mist and straight into it. No red mist for Adrian Poppen. He's 20 seconds off the pace in both short opening stages and has little to explain why. We didn't really get a lot of testing. Um, it was just sloppy conditions and, yeah, I don't know, just pulled my finger out, I think. In the four-wheel drive national series, Mark Petter's arrival with the all-new Peugeot Maxi car is overshadowed by Nick Patton. The series leader giving no ground after a disappointing Armorall STP power stage. I had a really good sleep yesterday afternoon and last night, so yeah, got all the nervous energy out uh, yesterday at the power stage on the jump start. He and Bernie Webb set fastest times on the opening stage to be followed home by the power stage wildcard Kent Lawrence. Lawrence is also using the first two short stages to settle in and prepare for the longer speedy contractor stage. Yeah, look, we had a really good run. It was clean, it was tidy, it was um, better than expected. So uh, we relaxed and just enjoyed it. Handling issues stopped the Pedder's suspension Peugeot from matching the Repco Evo. But somehow, Mark Pedder does beat Lawrence back to third through Gibber. We just can't control the back of the car, so... It's quite scary to drive, so I'm not sure what has happened between the power stage and here, but uh, we've got to do something because we just can't keep it on the road. Yesterday's other finalists have to be content for minor stage placings. Schofield and Bailey settling into a race of their own. Yeah, good, drying out, just trying to keep it nice and neat, uh, keep ahead of Gerald if we can all day, so that's going to be the battle of the, uh, of the day, I reckon. Speedy Contractors is the longest stage of the event. And it's coming up right after the break of the International Rally of Queensland. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. It's Evans v Evans through SS3 Speedy Contractors. Simon has better road position running behind the APRC field. But Eli is showing good speed, right, seven, racing open, between bursts of sun like through the trees. Don't. He and Glenn Weston use a life right, and manage seven. to continue. Opens for 70, then care, tightens fast, one in. Then fast left, two very long, over crest, tightens a bit. Simon, on the road behind them, isn't so lucky. Caution, fast right. Broken control arms and drive shaft mean Evans and Cece are out for the remainder of the day. Into left five, quick crossing. There's a third Cut outright left. contender in trouble through this 22-kilometre stage. Right While Eli Evans made it through the water crossing, Tony Sullins Into does not. Right five and a half. Oh, be buggered. Oh, it hasn't. It has. Almost the same driving line for Coppen and Kelly. But their engine air intake is not the same Short as Sullen's, right, and it makes all the difference. By the time Sullen's engine dries, the starter mount breaks, and he's forced to hold it in place while Julia attempts to restart the car. Molly Taylor is next on the road. She's 15 seconds slower than Eli, but the high-tech oil's Renault has no issues with water. Sullins and Barkley finally get started. But now it stalls, forcing a repeat of their unorthodox starting procedure. 
Steve McKenzie is struggling on, trying to make service. Speed is not an issue for him at the crossing, and Sullins is still trying to get going. Can you press that button down? Things have gone from bad to worse. Now the DS3 won't come out of gear. It's time to call it a day. Another clean run through Horden for Eli. An easy win from Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes by more than a second a K. And danger. In a desperate effort to go faster, Adrian Coppen changes suspension settings between stages. But it doesn't help. Into braking slope. Bad jump. With that, and all the temporary withdrawals, Ashley James grabs the chance to bask in some glory. Despite his own handling issues, he's third fastest in his VW Polo. Through Kandanga North, Eli and Glenn Weston suffer their own water problems in the factory DS3. Still, still good. Wow. With Simon sidelined, even a 37 second lead is not much when it involves a Citroen and Creeks. It's Molly's moment and she wins the stage by three seconds. Her niggling gearbox issue caused by a modification since Canberra. We've actually raised the engine up a little bit to try and give us a bit more clearance. And it just means just the angle of it's slightly different. So sometimes when you're stopped, it's a bit more difficult to, uh, to locate the gears. But um, yeah, in the stages, there's no problem. The problem for Citroen is clearly water crossings. It's very vulnerable right down there in front. It's like a big scoop. Um, you can put a flap on it to try to redirect it. On the World Rally cars, they actually have a cut-off flap, which is controlled by the co-driver to block the water intake. One suspects an area of modification very soon for the DS3. After stopping before he'd hardly started, Harry Bates might be considering modifications of his own in the Corolla. 800 metres into stage one and we lost drive and we've since found out it was both drive shafts that we've done. So um, looking to get back out there this afternoon and rejoin, but disappointing for sure. Even former champions have been sidelined today. Simon Evans can't believe how little damage was caused by his pace noting error. They made a mistake in recce and just broke the wrong note. We went off in fourth gear and the next thing we're going backwards down the road and I'm like... What happened? <laughs> and we still had a car, it was amazing. I broke a drive shaft and, wow. and that was it. We couldn't continue, you know, so. Mark Petter's chance to show off the new gen four wheel drive is dashed while trying to clean the windscreen of mud. The washer bottle is missing a vital component and the wipers just smear, reducing visibility. Kent Lawrence is up to second in stage and overall behind the flying Repco machine. Through Horden with a clean screen, Pedda gets the win from Patton with Lawrence relegated to third. Mike Bailey loses time to Schofield through Speedy but grabs the stage win back through SS4 and keeps their personal battle alive. Through five and Bailey beats series leader Mick Patton but for very good reason. Not a lot of movement. We found we only had third gear, so we sort of got to the end and limped out as best we could. Did a little bit of stuff on the side of the road and got it uh, one, three and five, but uh, it's all a bit sloppy in there at the moment, so the boys are here getting it all sorted. Um, lost a fair bit of time in that last one, but still held on the lead, I think, by 10 seconds um, at the lunchtime service. So. Can the boys fix the car to keep Nick in the game? We'll find out in just a moment. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship from Queensland. The afternoon stages of leg one are the repeat of this morning's. With no Simon Evans or Tony Sullins, Eli again opens up an advantage over championship leader Molly Taylor. But by the end of SS7, the high-tech oil's Renault is steaming away. They will make the refuel in Imbal, but a time delay to repair a blown radiator hose will cost them a massive four-minute penalty then slow down, short left eight, straddle through rough dip. Erring on the side of caution, Eli Evans takes care through the SS7 creek crossing. Care, yeah, slight crest into turn right one late. Okay. Yep. Still, the Citroen misfires. With turbo boost back, Steve and Brent McKenzie beat Molly to the end of Gibber. But the OptiCoke Fiesta is far from ideal. It's actually pulling now. Uh, intercoolers. 
still, no, sorry, the radiator is still leaking. Um, so we're still topping it up. Um, the rear beam is bent, so it's very nervous and fast stuff. Um, on right-handers especially, and very hard to just keep in a straight line. The brothers from Victoria do well enough through the repeat of Speedy, second to Eli Evans, who has no problems with his creek crossing this time. A sticking throttle in SS8 does little for Molly Taylor's confidence in her Renault. Something wrong with throttle. And she and Bill Hayes drop 40 seconds to the lead Citroen. Having already inherited second outline, Adrian Coppin is somewhat the Stephen Bradbury in by his own admission, a day of very average driving. I like to get the most out of them, they only work when they're sort of at 100%, so that's sort of, I think, probably a bit of the problem as well, but um, yeah, I've just, just got to sort it out and get on with it and stop whinging, I think. For Eli, it is the end of a very big day of rallying, and he continues to prove just how formidable a team he and Glenn Weston are. It's bloody tough. Citroen DS3, it's, um, you know, I've thrown everything at it. I've put it in the trees, bounced off some banks. I've had it on two wheels three or four times. I've put it through water splashes and it's just come through. So it's a brilliant little car. I love driving it. Mick Patton's lunchtime gearbox issues are resolved, but not without penalty. And as last round, we have a change in leader between stages. That means on debut in the ARC, Kent Lawrence is leading the four-wheel drive national series. Patton and Mark Petter beat him through the first repeat, but Lawrence is in the fight and pips the Petter suspension maxi for second through the next stage, hanging on to his 16-second advantage. Regular ARC competitor Mark Beard swapped his classic Corolla for his naturally aspirated RS this event and was never going to be a threat to the front runners. The subway Subi is the only car not to go sub four minutes. He and Jim Gleason in service early with a broken drive shaft. The Repco Evo storms back through SS7, jumping Michael Bailey to third outright, even with the two minute penalty. But the drive of the day is between the iLab Evo 8, toughing it out with the Petter Suspension 208 through three stages. Lawrence and Wilson steadily losing their buffer. But Petter and Moskett have been having their own dramas. They're distracted on the final stage start with fuel issues, and Moskett fails to plug in his intercom. Good. Without notes, Petter presses on while Moskett nope. struggles for nearly a minute before he can communicate with his driver. Still, they snatch the lead from Lawrence in the dying moments of the heat by three seconds and are now under the watchful eye of scrutineers, eager to ensure their leaking fuel is sorted ASAP. There's nothing Kent Lawrence can do. Look, I'm hoping we've held second. I know we were fighting there with uh, Petter in those last couple of stages and the gap was getting shorter. Yep. But, uh, well, we gave out everything we had through there in the last stage, so uh, let's see where that puts us. Plenty of ups and downs in League One, a bit like the rally itself. Dean Herridge has an ECB insight into the highs and lows of the International Rally of Queensland. Plenty of highs and lows in rallying, and this is a prime example. Rally Queensland, the highs being the jumps and the crests that you have to tackle, and of course the lows being the dips and the water crossings. Synonymous with this event, very difficult to judge. It almost comes down to recce and experience on how to pick the right pace. Of course, over the jumps, you've got to try and make sure the car lands nicely, not sacrifice too much speed. Alternatively, with the dips, slowing down enough that you get through them safely, not damage the car, and of course, add water. Had a lot of rain here. Make sure you get through there without doing too much damage to the water ingesting into the engine. So plenty to think about apart from just the lefts and the rights. And right now we have a clean break before the final leg of the ARC from Imble, the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. All that right after the break. The sun rises well after crews depart Caloundra for the pristine dairy country of the Mary Valley. Mist swirls around the trees, interrupted by shards of light splintering through the leaves that signal a new day. Day two, and after dramatic day one, anything can happen in this event. Eli Evans, a commanding lead in outright, and two casualties 
of day one. Simon Evans and Tony Sullins will rejoin. Their best hope, however, is obviously leg points. Four wheel drives, however, much closer. Three of our main contenders within a minute. Anything can happen in this event, still 100 kilometres to go. For the overnight four wheel drive national series leader, it's a near thing. His maxi car had to be pushed into park for May last night after it wouldn't start following service. Look, we're not sure what it is. You know, we had a, had a fuel leak obviously at the end of the last couple of stages and we might have been super, super lucky and the thing's run out of fuel as it's landed in service, but um, or it could just be a pressure thing. So the boys are checking all that now. And as you probably saw, we had to push it out of park for May, but um, look, with this crew, um, they'll get it done and we'll get back out there. With mechanics crawling all over the 208 Peugeot, it eventually fires and Petter does make the start. SS11 is the reverse of speedy contractors. 22 kilometres, including that infamous creek crossing. Pedder's problem begins long before the water, though. A frosty morning temperature, a steamy mix with engine heat. The windscreen demister won't clear the condensation. And the creek crossing doesn't help either. Stop, stop, stop. Vital seconds tick by and they surrender the leg lead back to Mick Patton. All right, go. Things get worse when the handbrake jams on. Handbrake stuck on. Locks on it. How do you get the lock off? In overall rally terms, Lawrence is now in front. There was certainly some dust and some sunny spots in there that made it very interesting, but a uh, bit of an excursion at the Water Creek, but uh, nevertheless, just uh, we got back into it and kept going. Meantime, Mike Bailey is losing his battle with Gerald Schofield. Uh, the turbo hose sounds like it's come off about 10k, so um, I was pedalling like bloody uh, Barney Rubble there up some of those hills. Nothing flints tone about Pedder and Moskett's charge back up the leaderboard. Every stage, they peg back more and more time. With the pressure on, Lawrence has a narrow escape in the six kilometre woodland stage. And the oil cooler has been bent in the previous million stage at the new jump. Another win for Pedder over Patton through SS13. Michael Bailey is up to third in stage with the turbo hose now secure, but a flat in the previous stage didn't help his cause. Patton extends his leg lead over four-wheel drive rally leader Lawrence after a win through the reverse run, Kandanga South. He beats Pedder for the stage victory by 0.9, but the Pedder suspension machine is in the wars. We've got no, no brakes. Then in Kandanga, we um, had no well, we had no handbrake and then lost rear brakes, yeah, had an overshoot no. uh, and then no clutch. So <laughs> uh, managed to drag the thing back here and um, fingers crossed the boys can get that right and we can head out this afternoon and um, try and peg back the 27 seconds, I think it is, to Ken. We've had a strong morning, so we went out hard and, and we're keeping it in there, so we'll keep focusing now for the last loop and see what we can bring home. But Pedder needn't worry about Lawrence. After a spectacular entrance to his debut ARC event, qualifying for the power stage and leading the four-wheel drive national series, Kent Lawrence departs the event the same way through Speedy North. No harm to either himself or James Wilson, but plenty of work required to the iLab Evo 8. Remarkably, despite their own dramas, the event lead now falls to the Pedder Suspension Maxi 208. Mick Patton is still in the hunt for a leg win, but that too is put to the test in the same stage. 150, flat 200. Patton and Webb struggle through the final three stages, but are forced to trailer back to Imbal to be at least officially counted as leg finishers. And six right tightens four through water, stay to the right. The day of dramas continues. Mike Bailey drowns his BP Ultimate Evo in the creek crossing through Speedy, shortening his rally. Shit, that's deeper than before. After two days of crossing this creek, water is certainly causing more problems. Beard's problem is the gears in his car. Third and fourth go AWOL with two stages to go. But he and Jim Gleeson are a rare breed this rally and will make the finish. Gerald Schofield is another keeping his nose clean. He wins his personal battle with Mike Bailey and will make a podium in what's become a weekend of carnage in four-wheel drive. 
for Petter and Moskett, it's hardly been a clean run this weekend. The finish is almost an anti-climax after the events of this rally. It's been a well-deserved win. The boys have done an outstanding job with the car. Like, to keep this thing going with all the dramas that we've had and, you know, we've got it better, it's just been, uh, yeah, credit for the boys. So, Mick Patton still leads the four-wheel drive national series, with Justin Dow needing to get back into the fight to stay in contention. Mark Petter and Gerald Schofield join the chase for points in the best three of four events from the 2015 season. Still to come, the final leg of the outright championship coming up right after the break. Watching the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship from the Sunshine Coast of Australia. The events of day one in the outright competition saw everyone in the walls. Simon Evans crashed out and Tony Sullins washed up before the end of leg one. The good news is they're all back to start leg two of the International Rally of Queensland. Rally leader Eli Evans is upbeat about the new day. Two of the biggest stages today are actually the reverse of the stages we did yesterday. So there's really only two new stages and then two in reverse direction. So um, the new stages will be a little bit looser, but the repeat stages are going to be rough, hard, swept and fast. So we'll see. It's, it's Rally Queensland. It's normally like this, so it's what we expect. And we um, going to keep it clean this morning. Eli's mo this morning is to ignore his opposition, especially his older brother, who will be hunting him down. Simon can't change the weekend result and the points bag that goes with it. So Eli needs to focus on the big picture and not worry about today's leg as much as the overall result. He and Glenn Weston decide to ignore Simon's times until the midday service. SS11 Speedy North is a clean run. It is two for Simon and Ben Searcy, despite an intermittent misfire in the engine and with a heart-in-mouth moment when Simon wonders whether there might be a stray wild pig at the back of the herd. They trail the Citroen by 5.8 seconds after 22 kilometres. Adrian Coppen is third, but a full minute behind the fastest two cars due to the screen fogging up. And that after a very cautious creek crossing. The slow approach for Tony Sullins in leg one didn't work, so he decides on a speedier approach. But the creek is deeper and it's in the reverse direction. The result speaks for itself, and he and Julia Barkley spend the next two minutes restarting the DS3 in a part of the forest they're becoming Come very on, familiar you, with. You've got to be joking. Steve McKenzie continues on for leg two, still suffering with boost issues in the Opticote Fiesta. Now, with no sump guard to protect the engine, he's more cautious. He and Brent are fifth. They do beat Molly Taylor, but she has issues at the creek crossing as well. She and Bill Hayes lose more than a minute getting to the finish. It's a three left tidy, don't. It'll clear. Their demise is Harry Bates' good fortune. The standard Corolla Sportivo records the fourth fastest time across the day's longest stage. But that's where his good fortune ends. You know, we had a good run yesterday afternoon and a good stage this morning. Um, unfortunately, this is it for us. We have no more spare drive shafts, but we'll be back. And, yeah, it's still been a good weekend, I think. Tony Sullins finally gets some runs on the board. He's fast and neat over New Million, third fastest behind the Evans brothers. It's Simon, though, who's quickest this time, upstaging his younger brother by three seconds, even with the misfire. While highlights of this rally seem to be focused around drive shafts and water crossings, tyres play a critical part in this equation as well. Dean caught up with Eli Evans after the New Million stage. We've spoken at previous rounds about the Kumo combinations. You, know, you get 16 per round. How do you use those? Different widths, compounds, etc. Another thing that you factor in, you don't just bolt them on and leave them on. Eli Evans here just finished one of the stages here in Queensland, going into another. Eli, you're checking some pressures. Pretty important part of the job for the driver and the co driver once you're out in the field. Yeah, it is. Um, it's really hot. <laughs> so we've just finished the stage now. We've had 500 metres transport, and then we sit here for 10 minutes. And just uh, in the two minutes we've sat here, my tyres have gone down two PSI just with the uh, with them cooling down. So, you know, 
tyre pressures are they're everything. It, if your tyre pressure is too high, um, your tyre doesn't move around as much and you feel like you're getting less grip and you feel like the car's not in the road. You bring them down a little bit, all of a sudden, suspension, everything works better and the car is in the road and it gives you confidence. But of course, not too low because you know, they can cause an issue in regards to punches. And also, it's a bit of a guarded secret between drivers on exactly what you find as an optimum temperature, isn't it? Yeah, and look, it varies between cars as well. Like if I was running a four-wheel drive turbocharged car, I might be a couple of PSI higher. But in this little Citroen DS3, which weighs 1150, it's it's a couple of hundred kilos lighter. So we run the tyre pressures a little bit lower, generate a little bit more heat and get a bit more out of them. It's not just about driving and co-driving, is it? <laughs> no, there's a bit of an art to it. And um, tyre pressures, well, they're the only, they're the only things touching the road. Um, so it's pretty important. And if you'd like a chance to take on the world with Kumo Tyre, and win a trip to round four of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship in September, then just check out the website, rally.com.au forward slash promotions for all the details. As it turns out today, Eli and Glenn Weston are carrying two spares for safety. A bit of extra weight, but cheap insurance in the long run. Ironically, Tony Sullins punctures next stage and drops 30 seconds. Worse still, he now has no spare for the remaining two stages before service. One second separates the Evans brothers. This time it's Eli's stage, but both are committed. Simon carries that commitment over into the final stage before service. Kandanga South is the tank former Honda stage by seven seconds. The normally reliable Citroen falters. 50. Reset the ignition. Eli is forced to reset the ECU on the run 20. through the 11 kilometer stage. Eight seconds ahead of Molly Taylor in what she admits is her favorite stage. Tony Sullins is desperately trying to make something of an otherwise very average weekend. He's fast in the Citroen, but several factors have been running against him this event. You've got to take the positives, otherwise you just give up and walk away in this sport, I think. So, um, yeah, the positive is I'm not slow and the car's good. Um, yeah. Molly Taylor has been struggling all weekend. Gear linkages, heater hoses and the windscreen demister. She's resigned to making the most of a bad situation. Frustrated by that, obviously, um, but, you know, we're in third for the, the event and that's, you know, as long as we don't make any mistakes, that's, that's going to be the case. Um, but, you know, we've still got 21 seconds behind Adrian going into the afternoon for this heat, so that's, that's still on our radar. And with Coppin's performance so far, it should be on her radar, although things are on the improve for him today. Steve McKenzie has been driving conservatively all morning. Without a sump guard, he's stiffened up the suspension in the front and has backed off just to make the finish and whatever points he can salvage. You've got to pick where you're going to push and um, in this rally, as you know, it's quite rough in a lot of spots, so there aren't too many spots you can actually have a bit of fun and, um, yeah, pull back sometime. Leg leader Simon Evans has finally worked out his engine misfire issue, but it took three stages. And the problem came back halfway through the stage. So me being a dumb didn't do anything about it, did another stage with the, the miss the whole time. And then I thought, oh, I might just disconnect the gear shift, which has got the engine cut in it. So we disconnected that. Perfect. Speedy is his by four seconds. But clearly, it isn't Sullen's. This time, without the airbox that's been feeding water directly to the engine, he's confident the car will be fine. Really? After the best part of three rounds, Ashley James is beginning to get things sorted in the VW Polo. At the moment, I, like the car's driving me, I don't feel confident in it or, and um, it's not set up right, so my confidence is not going to come until we can get the car sorted out. At service, they fix the throttle position sensor and he's well over a minute faster than his first pass on the same stage. Simon continues to lead, but through Woodlands, Eli hits back to close the gap to six seconds, coming into the final stage. Simon is fired up. He's not in contention for the outright weekend win, but bragging rights are his with a stage victory here, and he makes it clear it's his. Tony Sullins is on the road ahead of Evans, running in amongst the APRC field. But his weekend is still not looking any better, even with the finish line in sight the DS3 still seems to have an attraction to water. No, 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 no! Oh, yeah.
Reset the ignition. The ECU in Eli's Citroen cuts out again in exactly the same place as this morning, and they perform another reset without stopping. Is it off again? Yeah, it's good. Still, five seconds quicker than previous is far from concern. For us to be fast at six seconds down after about 70 or 80 kilometres is pretty impressive. So, um, you know, I'm really proud of proud of that and I'm proud of our speed all rallied it was just uh, just proved to be too consistent for all the other competitors. Big Brother is not too unhappy either pushing right to the end for a leg win. I was driving hard you know <laughs> the Honda Jazz was just loving it and I've got to compliment the Kumos mate they kept hanging on and hanging on that ah, was good you know like the car was just brilliant boys at Evans Motorsport gave me a fantastic car gotta love it. As an endurance round, you must finish every stage, so no Simon Evans in the overall results. Adrian Coppen, Steve McKenzie and Ashley James all proved this weekend that consistency and reaching the finish brings rewards. Our STP standout for this rally? Let's see what four times Australian rally champion Neil Bates has to say. STP standout, Kent Lawrence. He's a state competitor. He qualified for the power stage. He led the rally for one and a half days. Unfortunately crashed out, but definitely my STP standout. The Kumo Tire Spirit of the Rally Award goes to Steve McKenzie, doing everything he could to stay in the race, despite their issues on and off the road, and even just getting to this event. With the rally won, Eli Evans takes over the lead from Molly Taylor, with Adrian Coppen and Steve McKenzie both jumping Tony Sullins by consistently finishing stages. They'll all meet again at Coates Higher Rally Australia on the Coffs Coast in September for the fourth round of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. We hope you can join us September 10 to 13. For everything you need to keep up with the world of rally, just go to rally.com.au. Until then, I'm Greg Rust. Bye for now. Today's coverage is made possible by Kumo Tire, Pedder Suspension, Armour, STP, Co Tire, Can Am, Polaris, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars.